Well, this won't be of any use. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you, and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to elves. Um, well, elves eat people and their pets. Elves don't know the alphabet. The child's eyes grow wide. People ask you to eat them? Really? Neat. Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any sauce on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. No one cares where I go. They know I can't leave the island. It's nicer out here than inside anyway. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. Void Woken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they made it to shore. Look here, Quirkus. Another giant. My word, this blasted isle is teeming with them. Was that? Yes, I did see how it managed to survive an attack by the great Acorn servants. Impressive, just as you say. But that is no reason to trust it. 
giants like that destroyed our forests. They are the very reason the great acorn is returning in all its wrath. What? Dear me, have you taken leave of all six of your senses? You would have me use this giant for a shield? Why would I... Oh, but I see. <laughs> you are a cunning devil, Quirkus. Of course, if it escaped the great acorn's vile servants, it can do so again. We need only follow in its big, wide shadow and be safe. Egad! It speaks our tongue, Quirkus! Hush before! What do you mean, a good time for introductions? You know full well who I am, you silly old cat. The great Salora, grandest of the... Oh, introduce myself to the giant. I shall do no such thing. You give away your trust too easily, my dear steed. No, we will have the giant march. In time, we'll see whether it deserves our confidence. Now, onwards, shield! Venture forth, post haste. The great acorn waits for no one. spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady malcontent stare his skin is of a yes you recognize him from the ship it would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep the lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer or a duelist you lock eyes with his two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul I did survive yes and chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hole. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Now then, if there's nothing further... If you really must know, I haven't quite decided yet. I have a frightful amount of things on my mind, hence my standing here contemplating the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me. What do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Memories. Quite so. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? May the Seven have mercy on their own creation. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between All-Conquering and World Taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. 
For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly, a kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship, after all. Fine, I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. Jolly good. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards then to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be traveling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off!
stare at the slain beasts and comment that they must have been the cause of the shipwreck. They didn't put up much of a fight. Dry land mustn't suit them. Round and eaten by a void woken. I wonder which order. 